Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Pocosin City Council for Monday, May 12th. And if we could all please rise, we'll uh, have the invocation and allegiance the Pledge of Allegiance. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for the many blessings we have received in our city. As we move forward on various issues this evening, guide us. As we serve the community in the coming days, strengthen us to do what is right. And Lord, we especially ask that we stay mindful of those in need. Tonight, again, we ask for your blessing and presence that it be felt by those who serve our country, as well as our public safety employees who serve our nation, state, and city. Guide and protect them and bring comfort to their families as they protect all of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Again, thank you all for uh, joining us. And uh, we have a couple of special presentations this evening. The first one would be uh, uh, about the City of Pocosin webpage. And, buddy, while you're coming up, uh, I'll uh, uh, talk about the second one. The second one is going to be done by uh, uh, Evie. Is that, are you speaking tonight? Evie and Bodina? Talking about the recent uh, Keep America, Keep Pocosin Beautiful. Uh, although you're doing a great job on America as well, because that's been part of that. <laughs> but uh, we'll start with Buddy, and uh, you, you have a tough act to lead, so we put you first if you're going to talk about the webpage. Okay. okay. Well, um, Mayor Hunt and members of council, the first thing I want to do is uh, thank you for having me here this evening to uh, tell you about a project that um, several city employees and I are currently working on. Um, Back in uh, March, um, city manager um, requested volunteers at a staff meeting um, to uh, work on a committee to um, uh, to cut, get the feel from the citizens and the pub, you know, the public users of this current uh, current website. Um, you know what amenities that are currently on the site that are valuable to them and. Uh, you know what other features might be useful um, and all that um, because the website that we currently have it's been several years since it's been updated and uh, and so we and the, the city doesn't have a, a webmaster currently on staff so we know that we're going to have to go out you know and probably hire a webmaster and before you do that you kind of want to have a feel for what what the citizens want to see on the website and uh, you know uh, have kind of a blueprint to go by um, so you can tell them you know the things that we're interested in seeing and then and then get ideas from them what other websites what other features may be out there that we don't know about and uh, as part of that project uh, you know again um, the city manager um, challenged us with Trying to come up with an with the best way to reach these users and um, determine you know what it is that they would like to see, and um, so we had uh, a meeting, and um, after much discussion, we decided that uh, probably the best way was to do some type of survey, um, and uh, we decided to use uh, a tool called Survey Monkey. Uh, which I think the city has used in the past with some other surveys and uh, had really really good results at it and, uh, and so we chose that because it was probably the easiest to implement and uh, also you know we had had such good response with it in the past so uh, anyway um, as a group we sat down and we discussed you know what kind of questions we needed to put on there uh, we decided we needed to keep it kind of brief because you don't want you know a large survey generally you don't get much response um, so uh, we came up with we, we figured we needed to keep it below 20 questions and we've currently uh, come up with 15 and uh, and then we first decided that we probably ought to um, 
take this survey and uh, try it on the employees first. So we, we did that last Wednesday. We emailed all the employees the survey. And uh, as of today, we've already gotten 46 of them back. And we've gotten some pretty good responses and all that. Um, the other benefit of doing it with the employees first was that um, we may find out from them um, we're not getting the results from some of the questions. Maybe they're not worded exactly right. We're, maybe we, um, you know, we'd find that out by doing it with the uh, employees first. And uh, of course, we wanted to also come to y'all and let y'all know too what we were doing before we released it to the public. And you started getting questions and inquiries about it, and, and uh, wanted y'all to know that we were doing this. Um, we're probably going to continue with the survey with the employees uh, till this Friday. Um, by then, I think most of the employees will have responded to it. And then probably next week, we'll get together as a committee and go over those results and um, let Randy know what we came up with from those results, <coughs> make any changes that need to be done. And then hopefully um, uh, make the public aware of the survey sometime probably after Memorial Day weekend, which is just two weekend two weeks away. And uh, and what we hope, the way we hope to uh, let the public know about it is uh, you know through a message on the current website when people go there. Um, Another way would be to maybe put it on the city's um, um, TV cable channel. Um, the school board does uh, mailings on a regular basis. They've agreed to maybe put it on a mailing that they have coming out here pretty soon. And, uh, and there is a possibility, depending upon exactly when we do get it launched, maybe even putting a notice like on the water bill when it goes out so um, you know we have several methods of how we're going to try to get the information out there um, and we'll probably run that you know uh, that survey for two three weeks um, and then after we get the results from that survey we'll get back with Randy and uh, um, let him know what the results are and uh, and at that point, I guess we'll go forward trying to find a webmaster. And um, I think the idea is to hopefully try to get the, you know, maybe a contract with somebody by June, July time frame and maybe, um, you know, get the website up and running uh, maybe like the latter part of the summer or early fall. But all of that's still, you know, okay. kind of up in the air. So. Did anybody have Thank any you for questions? The, uh, thank or? you for the brief counsel. You got any questions? Please. Just a general question, not necessarily oh. you. Do we have anything like a city email directory? We, I mean, to, you mean city employees? No, or? I mean like citywide, like we do with the where we punch the button and ring everybody's no, phone. Sir, do no, we have an email no, capability? Sir, we, we do not. I don't know. I don't even know if there's any capability of doing that. But it was just occurring to me that that would be handy. Or stuff like this. That'd be nice. The only problem I could think of that is, is people have a tendency to change their email addresses so yeah. often, and then a lot of times that stuff will kind of go to junk mail right. and stuff. Yeah. So uh, it, it would probably be viewed as spam and not, yes. get, not get to yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, it could yeah. be. <clears throat> Some people but now we're work. just taking a guess, hoping we're going to get people. Not, not a bad well, idea. I, I think we're going to get people. In addition, we'll put it out on Facebook and Twitter when we do it. And through those electronic uh, media, we hope to get the people that use our electronic website. Mm -hmm. and, and One thing you might could do is on the new website when it's updated is request web um, email addresses from people that want to be filled in on city matters and so forth, and then good, uh, good idea. acquire the email addresses that way. But okay. I don't know how else you would do that. Anything else, uh, Council? I had a question. Um, when could we see the questions and the link to the survey? I suppose you could have email that to us. 
so sure. I can look at it. All right. The so. idea is we were going to complete the pretest before. I'd like to see the pretest. I have an expertise in question writing, t test Certainly. writing. So I think there's. We just, can, we I'd can like send to it to you with um, this finalized. week's report. Thank sure. you. Vicky, you got that? Thank you for stepping forward. Uh, the, the city's website uh, does need a little work. Uh, I, I will tell you, you know, it's uh, it's great that we, we have one. It was great when it was stood up, and it's just dated itself. I appreciate uh, you stepping forward to help us put uh, out something bigger, better, and uh, and more user-friendly. We definitely need that. Uh, I want to try and, and steer you away from too much scope creep, but uh, if you do a good a good job on this one, I've got the, the TV channel on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I have had experience with some websites in the past, but not with TV. <laughs> okay, thank you. Then. I appreciate it. You just stay on the website for right now. All right, uh, Evie, would you like to come and talk to council? And uh, as you're coming up, let me uh, let me just mention, and I've already heard it from several members of council as we all drove in and looked. Uh, what a great job. One of the the, uh, the improvements are out front here. Oh, yeah. And I'm not trying to take away from your uh, from your bang, but uh, what most of us recognize tonight is, is uh, you did this great improvement to the uh, memorial in front of City Hall that deals with our veterans, uh, that it brought the focus back on the veterans, that it brought the focus back on the memorial. And uh, I want to thank you for your leadership in that as you tell us uh, what else you've been up to. So, thanks. Thank you so very much, Mayor Hunt. You may want to make sure you've got a microphone. Oh. Or Bob can give you the mobile one if you want to walk. This one's, this won't be fine. Let it work. Hello. <laughs> thank you so much, Council, Mayor Hunt, Vice Mayor, Carrie Freeman. Uh, city manager, assistant city manager, and our counselor. Thank you so much for having us again. This is the third year in a row that we've got to stand up here in front of you and tell you how wonderful our job is, that we get to work with the volunteers here in the city. We get to work within the city. Uh, we are, quite frankly, running out of areas to beautify. <laughs> this particular focus, which this year happened to be our Veterans Memorial in the front traffic circle, came about actually last fall when we were uh, told by both the man mayor, the assistant mayor, the, I'm sorry, vice mayor, and the city manager. We all got together and it was discussed how neglected and overgrown our Veterans Memorial had become. It was still a wonderful memorial. However, you really could not see the memorial you could not see the light shining on the flags. We met with the master gardeners. We met with the extension office from Bacosa in York County. We got all types of flower possibilities, items that we could do to try to make it a better, more friendly memorial. Um, I don't know if you had heard but we had uh, actually man-eating hollies out front that were devouring our color guard as they came up to post the flags at our ceremonies. Uh, Public Works definitely would agree with that. They came out with many a scratch and bruise trying to pull out those same hollies. Uh, so it's kind of been a general consensus. We don't want to go there again. <laughs> but we will continue to move. Uh, this year's focus, of course, was the memorial. Uh, we had so many volunteers that came out most of them that worked on this memorial were from the american legion uh, the holloway moore <clears throat> post uh, they came out they helped several of our volunteers that really work within city plus a few from the general public who came out uh, we had an assembly line going they the public works had cleared the pallet for us they put out the flowers in a design that we decided a little bit beforehand. They came out, the volunteers came out, dug the hole, put in the compost, someone else put in the flower, covered the flowers back up, we covered them with mulch, and they were watered. It was done in a very expeditious matter, manner. As a matter of fact, it went so quickly that we were also able to share the love with the Oxford Run Park. 
The two signs that were there were also covered with flowers in the same, by the same people. We were just very, very blessed to have as many people and to have them work as they did. Is that it, one more? Go, Dina. <laughs> we also had the Pocosin Business Alliance come out and help, and they ended up cleaning up um, Amory's Wharf. They did that in a very speedy manner. And then they went to um, down to Messick Point and cleaned up down there. We ended up with about, and I will say this, and this is a terrific thing, from the first year that we cleaned up to now, the first year we cleaned up Messick Point, we had 18 crab pots, 20-some tires. I mean, Randy can tell you it was just this vehicle size mound of stuff and a kitchen sink and a kitchen sink thank you um <laughs> this year we had one bag of trash down at the wharf and we only had three plus crab pots and when i say plus somebody had cut one up into little pieces like this big <laughs> that was fun um and we had about five bags of trash so it it you can see what we've been doing is make an impact and people are seeing that we are trying to keep everything beautiful. That's why we call it Keep Coast and Beautiful. Um, <laughs> but the Business Alliance and the other volunteers, what we asked them this year was, because as Evie said, we're running out of projects that we know of. We asked for additional projects and we are getting some feedback from them. So that should help us in the future years. We also had volunteers that did the Oxford Run Trail. Um, Public Works had cut it that day starting at City Hall and went all the way around. And most of the debris was at the pond and behind food lines. So that's where they concentrated their efforts. I have not talked to um, Chris and Mike who were our project managers on that site to see how much they actually picked up. So I can't give you numbers for that, but they did say it was very trashy back there and it's more of a windblown type of thing for back there as you can see here's Lisa and her grandson that was our youngest volunteer mm -hmm. of the day and he was just super enthusiastic and so easy to work with I think <coughs> our, my public works guys were going to take him home before the day was over um, we wanted to thank everyone very much um, we had sponsors I would I'll let Evie go with that, but I really want to do the last one, so I'll do that first. As you saw in the beginning, the drawing, Kathy Abel Nelson from Iris Art Studios did that for us, and she did such a fantastic job. And we've used it as letterhead in our thank you cards and our t-shirts for this year. So, Evie? We want to thank all of our volunteers. Holloway Moore Post 273, that's what I couldn't think of earlier, uh, of the American Legion. They came out full force. Mr. Charlie French took a branch and went through every little hole where the flags go and pulled up all the old leaves and gunk out of it. So we really got a good cleanup. Uh, we also had public work workers and city employees who gave up their time, their Saturdays to come out. Uh, Lisa Holloway and her grandson, as you saw. Uh, Doreen Smith from Finance. And Helen Heck from the library. We had Lenora Garland. She brought her two teenagers out. One who did the trail and one who helped with the planning. And we had so many other people here that I, I just can't even name everyone. But we love the volunteers. We love Pocosin, just like she said. They, people are now taking care of Pocosin because they love being here. Farm Fresh was a sponsor. They gave us ice water. They gave us snacks to, to give to our volunteers. Uh, the Daily Press, thank you, also publicized the event as well as the Pocosin Post. And Pocosin <coughs> Shopping Center, Port Messick, and the Pocosin Business Association. Uh, the Pocosin Business Association not only volunteered, but they all contributed towards the gorgeous T-shirts that we were able to produce. Um, and again, Kathy Abel Nelson, can't say enough. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for letting us do this. We are just truly blessed. Love my job. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all both. And uh, really the thanks is, is ours uh, to you for coordinating that. That's, that's, uh, it's uh, more work than just that day, and we appreciate that. Okay. With that, uh, with the special presentations finished, we'll have our audience for visitors. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to speak on any subject, uh, now is that time. 
Seeing none, we'll close the audience for visitors and ask council for approval of the minutes. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the minutes of the regular session April 28, 2014. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we approve the regular session minutes and those are as amended. Is that correct? The ones that yes. are your Okay, thank you. All right, duty please. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Bernal? Aye. Councilman Ayer? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Councilwoman Crawford? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. Okay, and the work session? I move that we adopt the work session minutes of April 28, 2014. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we approve those also. Questions or comments? Not Judy, please. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Bernal? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Ayer? Aye. Councilwoman Crawford? Aye. And Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. Okay, the uh, next item on our agenda this evening is a public hearing, and that public hearing is uh, uh, concerning school board appointments. <laughs> and uh, the way this basically works is uh, we have a couple of, of nominations already on, but tonight is that time if there's anybody else to be considered that they should, their name should be uh, presented as well. So with that said, uh, will somebody read the names of those that are... Uh, that are to I be would, reconsidered. I would be pleased to, Mr. Mayor. In the Western Precinct, Gary W. Carter, Jr. In the Central Precinct, Mr. David Hux, both of which are incumbents and eligible for reappointment. Are those precincts correct? I thought David was Western. David is Western. Yep. David is Western. And we wrote it backwards, perhaps. Yeah, I, th I yeah, think, I think you did. Backwards, and backwards okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we'll correct that. Apologize for that. All right. With that said, uh, I'll open the public hearing and ask if there are other names that should be considered at this time. Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask, uh, uh, well, I guess no actions required this evening. So uh, we'll just move forward and uh, move to unfinished business. Uh, so unfinished business, which is obviously important to, to everyone, this is the second reading and final adoption of the fiscal year 2014-2015 annual financial plan. Randy, do you want to do a summation or do you want us to directly proceed? Um, maybe a really brief summation. Only to say that uh, for you, you have one draft resolution and three ordinances. The uh, documentation is consistent with your direction <coughs> regarding the preparation of the second uh, reading documents to uh, refresh your memory and that the public's memory as to what those changes were. There were uh, $30,000 in miscellaneous uh, changes that we reviewed with you at the last closed session were included in your, in your motion of direction. Um, in addition to that, the only other significant issue was a decision to uh, change the proposed tax real estate tax rate from $1.5 to $1.7 and to use that money uh, to replace the one-time uh, funds that were in the recommended budget originally for schools. So the net effect to schools is the same. The city would therefore maintain within its reserves that 300000 And those are the only changes from the um, original recommended budget. Okay. That said, is there a motion uh, to, to adopt the resolution? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution approving the adoption of the adopted FY 2014-15 annual financial plan for the city of Bacotion, Virginia. Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we approve the resolution adopting the overall plan. All right, questions or comments by council? All right, seeing none, uh, I'll ask for Judy. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Vernal. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of seven to zero. Okay, next item is an ordinance establishing the real estate tax rate. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance to lay a $1.07 levy per $100 assessed value on all real estate in the city of Pocosin, Virginia, for the general operation of the various departments of the city of government. There a second? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded that we uh, approve the ordinance establishing the real estate tax rate. Questions or comments? 
I have some comments uh, before we vote. I think that uh, it's always real hard when we're doing a tax increase. And I think the citizens get a good value in this town for tax money. Uh, we try our hardest to spend it wisely. Our fire, police, ambulance will be at your house within about three minutes routinely. And, and that's an average citywide. We got youth programs that involve hundreds, nearly a thousand of our youth. Our schools are absolutely super. They just got an award that they're one out of three divisions in the entire state that got the Governor's Excellence Award. And I just think we're doing pretty good with the tax money. And we, we take that very seriously because we realize that we're taking money from the citizens to do what we do with it. Uh, this year, the city and schools together uh, made requests to us and we could cover that with eight cents. I thought that was uh, good. I was uh, very far doing the eight cents. I am not going to vote for the ten percent uh, for the ten cents. And I just wanted folks to know that uh, that's the reason that we had it covered. We had worked it pretty hard, and uh, I just don't see that we need to go that high. That's all. Okay. Any other comments? If not, uh, we have a motion made and seconded. Judy, please. Councilwoman Crawford? Aye. Councilman Ayer? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? No. Councilman Bernal? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. And Mayor Hunt? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of six to one. Okay, next is an ordinance establishing personal property, watercraft, privately owned camping vehicles, and motorhome tax rates. The motion on that. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance to lay a $4.15 levy on all personal property, a one ten thousandth cent levy on all watercraft, a $1.50 levy on all privately owned camping trailers and motorhomes, and a dollar seven levy on all vehicles without motive power, used or designed to be used as manufactured homes in the city of Pocosin, Virginia, <laughs> for the general operation of the various departments of the city government. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion made and seconded as we approve the ordinance uh, establishing personal property, watercraft, and private land camping trailers and motorhome tax rates. Questions or comments? I have another comment. Same okay. thing as I said last year. I think that we needed to go down to uh, approaching zero in the marinas or on the watercraft to give our marinas sort of a level playing field. But I think we also should have looked or look at the campers and trailers because we're selecting which recreational vehicle you have to pay your tax on. And I think that's a little on the unfair side. Let's either say, okay, uh, regardless of your recreational vehicle, let's make it zero or, or let's don't. So I'm going to vote against this one as well. That's all. Okay. Any other comments? I'd just like to say that uh, I think that Reduction on the watercraft makes perfectly good sense, and the other vehicles that you're talking about use our highways and roads. The boats don't. The water costs us nothing to maintain, but the roads do. So I, I think we're very justified in in the difference of the two. I got two boats on trailers, and one of them I put in the back of my pickup <laughs> truck, so I have to drive them down the road anyhow. Well, we're, we're taxing your trailer. Okay. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. All right. I've got a question just under that same thing, and as far as the boat, I, mean, I know it's a mute point, really, because we've done it. But what's the change in? Anybody know what the change in the how many more boats we have this year as opposed to last year? It's only been what half a year, so we really don't know that yet, because it didn't go into effect till January. And this is what May. Yeah. This is the first collection period, right? Since okay. since the moat, since this was done last year. Okay. Again, uh, just so that we we're not getting off subject. Uh, the boat tax. Uh, this was. This is not an issue of this year. I'm not saying it's. Uh, it's not in here. You're not voting positively or negatively for. It. But it's not a new issue this year. Uh, this is not something that uh, was new in council deliberations. This was something from last year. So with that said, uh, uh, Judy, please call the roll. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. Councilman Ayer. No. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? No. And Mayor Hunt? Aye.
Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of five to two. Okay, and last is an ordinance adopting appropriating funds to the various governmental funds. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance to appropriate funds to the various governmental funds for the City of Percussion, Virginia for FY 2014-15. Second. Okay, motion made and second that we approve that ordinance. Uh, questions or comments? Okay, Judy, please. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote is seven to zero. Okay. Thank you very much, Council, and uh, appreciate everybody working together. It was, it's, uh, it's that's the close of another uh, hard budget year, and uh, it took a lot of negotiation. And I think uh, the best of all, that negotiation came out in, at the end. So uh, appreciate that, and appreciate Council's uh, keeping that professional all the way through. So. All right, uh, next we move to new business. This is a resolution establishing the summer city council meeting schedule. Somebody prepared with a motion. Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution canceling the first meetings of the months of June, July, and August 2014. Second. Okay, motion made and second that we approve that. Uh, any comments? Anybody want to work more? <laughs> okay. Morning, Happy to said, Judy, Judy, if Free you would. Uh, Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote is seven to zero. And the next one is uh, interesting this evening. It's a resolution authorizing the purchase of hurricane shutters for City Hall. And Brandy, if you would like to give us the, the lowdown on this. I'd be pleased to. I'd also um, point out to you that Deputy Chief Bryan is here as well in his role as Emergency Services Coordinator and Grant Finder. Um, as the Council is aware and the public is aware, uh, City Hall in it, during a severe weather event is also the Emergency Operations Center, which uh, masquerades by day as your conference room. This room that we're in uh, now uh, is our AV Support Center, access to our TV channel. It's where our ham radio operators set up. Our CERT team does some work in here, and our citizen information line are here. Uh, we were concerned, um, as part of our debrief of the last storm, that we needed to uh, protect this building, particularly um, in the midst of a storm. It may be difficult to move to an alternate EOC, which is in your county. Uh, more than likely at the, at the 911 center. So uh, Michael was able to work with um, FEMA uh, to repurpose 4,000, a little more than 4,000 of an existing uh, grant uh, to be combined uh, with uh, about $3,800 uh, of money from the fire department's current year budget. And uh, what we're doing, uh, what we'd like to do, is to put forth these shutters on the front of the uh, City Hall building. These are pictures of sort of what they look like. But before we, uh, we make alterations to your building, we, uh, we wanted to, to tell you what we were planning to do and also share that with the public. This doesn't really require, uh, well, I guess it does, uh, a resolution. I don't see a resolution in here. I don't believe a resolution is required. There, 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 there is. Sorry. There there is. Second there all right, this is, um, and what we're planning to do is start here. It may be that as we are able to access, particularly these grant monies over the coming years, we may use different uh, technologies to harden the rest of the windows, maybe film or other things where um, it's, not, it's, not, it's not as critical. We want to maintain safety, but if some water gets in, we can live with it, as opposed to these buildings if, or these windows. If they're compromised, our entire function may go down. Michael, would you like to come up and add anything? While he's coming up, we're talking about this room and the room next door. Yes, yeah, starting from the AV room, which has a window through to your conference room. Uh, I think Randy uh, pretty much covered it fairly well. Uh, we were, our main concern is safety and uh, the protection of the individuals that are occupying the OC in this, this room as well. So the windows that we're looking at or the shutters that we're looking at are uh, up to category three window or shutter. So they can handle just about anything that comes down the pipe. Okay. I see you chose a manual, so you yes, run sir. out they are, and they're manual the hook operated. They're not electrical. Down. So uh, rather than 
getting plywood and, and going through all like that. A, a winder from the yes, inside. Sir. That's okay. correct. Okay. That's correct. I had a question about are we not concerned about the door area, the entrance area? Or I, even the end door. I, I think we're concerned about the entire building. Right. Um, and I think we'd like to get at that over time. We okay. just only had enough money to start. Okay. We, we'd eventually like to, to do something with the whole building. Okay. So the amount of the grant is what now? A little over 4000 It was remaining from an existing grant. We get a small amount of money for emergency preparedness this yeah. year. Yeah, so about 4000 The one The one thing that sticks out in my mind is um, <clears throat> as we as we do this that the that the building stay balanced and, I, and i'm just going to leave it to you this way the windows at the library end of the building versus this room and the small room i just want to make sure that city hall continues to be aesthetically matching uh, as we do that if that costs us to put together another couple thousand dollars to make it all one and protect the library windows <coughs> Bring that back before council. Uh, I don't want us to look off balance. So that this might be something you can talk with an architect and say, I, I got your pictures. They don't look intrusive, uh, but I do want the building to, to remain uh, pleasing uh, to all of our citizens. So, uh, And I don't think it would be money that uh, would be fun. We'd like to protect the library windows as well. So uh, with that said, just bring it back. Keep it in the back of your minds as staff, and we appreciate you bringing this forward. Most of all, Mike, we appreciate that second job of finding the grant to pay for it with so that the taxpayers are not paying that, and we appreciate that as well. Sure. Okay? So, Thank you. All right. So we'll move forward with this, and if there's a, if there's a problem, you, we'll deal with that after we'll come back. Okay. So is there a motion to approve the resolution? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt the resolution <coughs> authorizing the purchase of hurricane shutters for City Hall, and I hope it's like carrying an umbrella, you never have to use it. Second. I agree. Okay, motion made and second that we approve those uh, hurricane shutters for City Hall, and uh, appreciate the comments there. Uh, Judy, please. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. Mayor Hine. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote is 7 to 0. Okay, the next is uh, next item under new business is an endorsement of a letter to Governor McCulloch. On, uh, this is regarding Amtrak regional service on the peninsula. And uh, I guess this is, Randy, you want to just... And what this is, uh, basically I, would, I would be pleased to or defer to the vice mayor. Um, recently, at a Peninsula Mayors and Chairs uh, meeting, there was a discussion with regard to high-speed rail and higher-speed rail, and it appears that there's a possibility for those two concepts, high-speed rail on the south side and higher-speed rail, difference in, in terms, slightly different rail service, uh, which were, uh, when put forward by the TPO, coupled together as one interlocking piece. And uh, in some areas of the state's planning process, that interlocking nature seems to be separating. So it was a discussion among the mayor specifically and, and the board of supervisors chairman that a joint letter signed uh, by the mayors or the board chairs from each of the peninsula jurisdictions uh, reminding and exhorting the state to also be <coughs> moving forward at best possible speed on the planning and other things associated with higher speed rail would be appropriate at this time. And so through that group, they've asked uh, each of the communities to consider signing it. Okay. And I obviously have no uh, issue signing it, but uh, this is basically council's uh, uh, chance to, to react to the letter. I think we've all read the letter. And is there a motion that uh, we move forward to go ahead and sign this? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign a letter to Governor McCall in support of a study of the capacity improvements needed to expand Amtrak regional service on the peninsula. Second. A motion made and second that we uh, that I sign that letter. Got it. All right. Uh, that's it. Judy, please. Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Councilwoman Crawford. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by vote is 7 to 0. Okay, comments of the city manager. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would probably note that it would have been a good night to seek appropriation for HVAC system repair. <laughs> in this room. I apologize to all the people at home that are watching a sweat up here. Um, I just want to take a minute and just th express my thanks to Mike 
and to Evie and Bodina and to Buddy and the group that are working with him, we don't have a whole lot of extra anything within the city government structure. So every time we need to do something, we need to rely on those other duties assigned, or in some cases our friends, to make it work. Um, our website in its current iteration was primarily done by a, by a CNU student who was interning with us. Um, and that's the kind of, when, when Buddy Faison was talking about a webmaster, it's not in the, in the traditional sense that like a Virginia Beach would get one. Um, but the point is, uh, there's always somebody willing to volunteer to include all the folks that helped us this weekend. Um, that's what makes it work. The community volunteers, the staff that routinely go outside of, of their area of responsibility and with a smile on their face, and more often than not, will thank you for the opportunity to do something that contributes as opposed to grouse about being asked to do yet one more thing. And, and they're a very special group, and I just wanted to say thank you to them. And I want to add to that, you know, you, you may recall a few years ago, as part of our consolidation and tightening of the budgets, we consolidated our rather meager IT resources with schools just to, to help safeguard some of their capacity and, and to create yet another joint service. They do a fantastic job with us, and they do way more than we pay for. And no matter what uh, we, we ask them to do, Joe and his team always seem to have a smile on their face. And, and more often than not, uh, we get white glove service to the extent that they can afford it. And, um, and that's something that helps make it work, too. And, I, and lastly, just so that I would, would, um, would not forget, uh, we were talking before the meeting about the imp recent improvements to the South Lawson Park entranceway. We're not done. We're going to plan to make some more in the next few months as, as we can uh, identify uh, monies in year-end's budget. We hope to do a little paving out there to reduce the uh, dust. We also hope to do uh, some work for handicap access to the accessibility to the, to the rear fields. And lastly, another thing that was done recently uh, was to add some security lights to Messick Point, the big ones up on the poles. We had been hearing from, uh, from the public and observing it, uh, folks that were taking their four-wheel drive vehicles onto the public grass areas and really rutting it up. In addition to, uh, we had some dark spots out there that were a popular hangout spot and uh, we've made them a little less dark. Well, a lot less dark. There are no, there are no, there are no out, paved dark light. spots anymore. <laughs> you can Thanks. hang out, but you're in the light. Is that That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have, sir. You can see what you're doing there. That's right. You can see what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you, Randy. Appreciate that. All right, uh, Bud, Councils of Directives of Council. I'm going to be quiet tonight. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the people associated, the individuals and the groups associated with doing our memorial site out front. They really did a fantastic job, and I'd like to comment on that. Very nice work. Thank you very much. Agreed. And um, also, Kiwanis, the Kiwanis Barbecue is coming up on the 17th of May. So if you want tickets, you can see me. <coughs> I didn't bring mine tonight, but right now. So. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, just a couple of things. I was also going to comment on the uh, memorial out front. Evie was talking about the man-eating holly bushes. It was really particularly bad on the uh, ROTC cadets trying to put the flags in. And, in fact, they were so overgrown that it was very difficult to get the flags in. So it's just a tremendous improvement. And then also on our schools, when you think about in the entire state, I don't know how many school divisions there are. I used to know that. Some. I used to know that 140 some odd, and we were one of three, <clears throat> and that's uh, just pretty good. Give you that. Okay, Councilman Vernon. Last week, uh, I was in attendance at the uh, Realtors uh, uh, meeting that was held down at the Yacht Club. After the meeting, and uh, several members of several of the attendees uh, spoke to me and, and were so complimentary of the presentations that the staff did. They thought they were really top notch, very informative, and they were very appreciative. And uh, I think uh, we've really put our best foot forward at that. Uh, I was very, very proud of the work that was done. 
Thank you. Thank you. And that, uh, that, that uh, Randy, your staff should be commended for that. We, we saw a great report tonight and uh, should have been highlighted. Thanks. Buddy? Uh, several things, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to remind people of the food drive, the community food drive that will start on the 19th of this month, 19th through the 23rd. Monday we'll be at the high school, Tuesday at the primary school, Wednesday at the middle school, Thursday at the elementary school, and then we'll finish up Friday at Farm Fresh. And the hours will be 9 to 2.30. Uh, we'll be, if you can please bring us some food, it goes to the local food pantry uh, and supports the hungry in Pocotion. Uh, also, the food bank will be here on the 27th, which is the day of our meeting that night, so I can't remind you after the second meeting. But uh, thanks to our anonymous donor, we'll have extra meat again. And uh, that will be on the 27th from 10 to 1 at the old city hall. And the Heritage Park slash Waterman's Monument Committee will be having a wreath floating in honor of the 42 Waterman that we've identified that died while working the waters. Uh, it'll also honor those watermen that are currently working and those that have died of natural causes, but we will read the 42 names. Uh, the mayor is gonna speak and we'll, we'll have uh, our minister there to uh, say a little prayer as we float the wreath and sing a hymn. Uh, we're selling carnations, three for $10 to make the wreath and all monies in ex excess will go to the funding of the monument. Thank you very much for highlighting that. Hey, uh, Henry? Yeah, just to reiterate a lot of things that our folks already have, the Holloway Moore American Legion Post 273 and the volunteers, Padina and Evie that uh, made that possible. When you come up that driveway, you just can't help but notice it. I mean, it's just, uh, and I think the Memorial Day, those veterans will certainly appreciate that, that's for sure. Um, and all the folks who worked on the budget, um, just a long, long drawn out thing I know and a job well done. A lot of things were addressed, so there won't be a lot of kicking the can down the road. But there are some things that uh, we need to look at as well further down the road. Um, they'll be actively, talk, talk is cheap, but we are talking about things that need to be looked at down the road as well um, for staff, schools things of that nature. Um, DMV to go, I think, is here tomorrow, Tuesday. Uh, so remind folks about that. Um, and Mike, appreciate the grant redistribution of that money. That certainly helps a lot. And just appreciate everybody for everything they do. Okay, thank you. And I'll close out by saying uh, it's it's great for this council, uh, but it's uh, it just feels great to be the mayor of a city uh, where council comes up here and has more thanks then they have things to complain about. And uh, I know that the budget was uh, tough, and we, we take that that, uh, that toughness, we, we feel it uh, for the citizens at home as well. Uh, we're taxpayers as well. And uh, uh, what I will tell you is that uh, several people here talked about the strength of the schools and the accolades that they, uh, that they re receive. The, this budget was all about the future of that. Next year, Henry is correct, we need to address some other things, but uh, that doesn't mean that uh, councils, uh, we've, we've, we've done some good things in the city as far as looking out to the future. Uh, and I'll give the residents one uh, thing that they may not realize. Why would we meet with the residential realtors? Um, you know, why would we as a staff go and meet with them? Pocosin thinks a little bit different than uh, the surrounding cities. You know, we're small, uh, we're all, but we think differently. And that's all about protecting the home values of the citizens. So we want to make sure that, you're, that the realtors who sell your homes and that can negotiate those home sales uh, maintain the property value that you're used to used to seeing and you won't see that done anywhere else so a lot of times when we talk about economic development that's not always just about new business you know I kind of wanted to highlight that uh, we think differently uh, we've come through what we want to do to protect those schools 
And I think uh, now we've got to focus on getting some growth and some real growth dollars uh, in the next year to uh, do the things that uh, remain to be done. But uh, that's what the, all of that negotiation was about. And I appreciate uh, every day uh, being the mayor of a city of volunteers where we have more accolades than complaints. And uh, I'll close with that. So with that being said, um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. A motion made and second that we adjourn. Judy, Councilwoman please. Crawford. Aye. Councilman Ayer. Aye. Councilman Southall. Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Councilman Bernal. Aye. Councilman Green. Aye. And Mayor Hunt. Aye. Motion carried on vote is seven to zero. Okay. And we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.